Let's now tackle this tricky sphere problem from the AMC 10B. Four congruent semicircles are drawn on the surface of a sphere with radius 2, as shown, creating a closed curve that divides the surface into two congruent regions. We're asked to find the length of the curve, basically. Hmm, this is tricky. This is actually one of the, in my opinion, this is quite hard for number 20, especially compared to some of the later problems from 21 to 24. So they both have radius 2. Or, yeah, sorry, the sphere has radius 2. And we're basically, if we can find the radius of these semicircles, then we would be done. Then it would be pretty simple finish from there. So basically, let's find the radius of the semicircles. How do we do this? So we somehow have to use this condition. Service into two congruent regions. Hmm. So what, let's take a look at this part first. Let's take a look at this surface, like all of this stuff on the front side, and then all of this, this region on the back. So that surface area, how do we find that surface area? How do we find when is it going to be half? So the key thing here is we can have, we have these kind of two possible regions, right? This is one of our possible regions. Oh, it's a little bit, it looks kind of strange on this. And then the other possible, the other semicircle on the other side is this, right? So both of these kind of, remember, they're not really, this is not going to be, this surface is not going to have an area of pi r squared divided by 2 because this is not a flat surface. This is a sphere. This is going to be some kind of weird curved shape. It's going to be like a, we have a sphere. It's going to be like a, it's going to be like a curve on the sphere. So it's going to have, it's going to be more than just this area of the semicircle if we can assume this is r. It's going to be like, imagine bulging out, right? So that's, those are our two things, and I'll just make this one more, slightly more pronounced, I think. Okay, so the, these two regions are, there. if we know the radius, then we know those two, or we don't, we, it's, never mind, actually. These regions, they're very hard to find the surface area of these regions. So how are we possibly going to find out when it divides into two congruent regions? Well, naturally, we looked at one of these regions. Let's look at the other one, right? Maybe we'll get some information from there. So what is this other region composed of? It's composed of this semicircular region here. Oops. It's composed, you, it may not look like a semicircle here, but it is a semicircle. It's just the reason it looks strange is because of the fact that it is, it is, of course, slightly, it's tilted in a slightly different direction. Okay, I'm going to use just dark green. So you see, this is still a semicircle. And the key thing is because of all four of these semicircles are congruent, it's going to be exactly the same as this semicircle. It just looks much smaller because it's on the side. So you're seeing a side view of it. So the radius of this semicircle is the same as the radius of this semicircle. And notice that there's something really cool here. You know how this blue region, which is like on the sphere, you imagine a sphere, it's like it's part of the surface of the sphere, that blue region. We can see something very similar about this region over here. If you imagine this spherical region over here, like you imagine we have a semicircle, and then that semicircle occupies a spherical region, like it bulges out from the semicircle. The surface area of that spherical region, well, because the semicircle is exactly congruent to this semicircle, the surface area of that spherical region is going to be exactly the same as the surface area of this spherical region. That's pretty cool. So, because of the fact we're given that these two regions the sphere is divided to, the surfaces are, have equal surface area, Imagine if we just take this blue region and move it here. We move it to this part over here. Similarly, we take this purple region and we move it. We imagine this region over here. And we just move it over there. This, this, this region, right? Where we have, we have another, this is another exact same semicircle. 
And then it also occupies, like, if you bound it out, draw the line. I know this problem is a little bit hard to visualize. But this will occupy, it will occupy some surface area on the sphere. This region. So, we just move this piece here. We move this piece there. And as you can see, now, all we know is that this thingy has to be a hemisphere. Because it has equal, now let's redraw our new curve. We kind of adjusted our curve. We now have, let's draw this one. Let's draw, let's give me something like this. And then like this, I don't know. This is my best attempt to draw a curve on this. I know this problem is uh, very hard to visualize. So this, or it's not gonna look, it's not gonna be quite straight like that, I guess. It's gonna be a little bit more curved going to be like a, a curve here. So imagine this is a hemisphere, right? Now, because of the fact that this region and this region, the two pieces have equal surface area, right? Because we just move this region, this piece has the same surface area as the original piece. We just moved half of there. So we just see that this is going to be half of the sphere. We can just see this is half of the sphere and this is half of the sphere. And what does that mean? Well, that means the center, if this is going to be half of the sphere, the center is going to lie here. And the center is going to lie, it's going to lie in the plane formed by these four points, right? You can imagine there's like a rectangle here. And the center is going to lie there. So now it just comes back to taking cross sections to, in order to solve this. Because if you watch my videos on 3D Geo, you know the best solution. These, to tackling the, if you can't visualize it, is to take cross sections. Obviously, if you're advanced and you've had a lot of practice with 3D Geo, you know, it'll just make sense what to do immediately. So what we're going to do is we're trying to look at the radius, right? So let's take a cross section through this plane. This circle, you see this blue thing's a circle, right? It may not look like a circle, but it is a circle. And we unfold that circle like that. So now, at this circle, this circle, because it goes through the center of the sphere, it's going to have the same radius as the sphere, which is given to be 2. So we can write, you know, like 2 and 2. But the thing about this is, imagine, what is this, this region going to look like in our cross-section, these two arcs? So what we're going to have is, this this arc over here is going to it's going to be something like it's going to be something like this. Like imagine it's gonna pass it at some line. We have this line. What is that line representing? This black line I drew? This black line on our 3D diagram represents this over here. So imagine we take this this line over here, we unfold it, we get this. So the key thing about this is this line, well let's call let's say this has radius r, right? We can see 2r is just equal to this. We have r, r. So, and we're also given that this radius is 2. Hmm, interesting. So now the question is, what is this distance? What is the distance between the center and the black line, which is this distance? Well, take a look. This semicircle also has radius r. This one, let's say. So we can say that this distance is also going to be r. Therefore, now we have 45, 45, 90 triangles. We have r root 2 equals 2. So therefore, r is square root of 2. And now it's pretty easy. Now we just have four of these semicircular arcs. So all we do is we say, it's basically 4 times half of an arc, so 4 times 2 pi r by, by 2, which is just 4 pi root 2, or root 32 pi. So our answer is 32. A really cool problem, but it really tests your visualization skills, and how you can imagine you place this piece over here. You know, it's the same exact thing by symmetry. And then the same thing for this thingy there. So then we do that, we unfold, we just get we just get half of a sphere because we realize that, oh, we're given their equal area. And now once we've unfolded it, this thingy must become half of a sphere. 
And therefore, now from here, the trick is to take a cross section if you're not able to visualize it and realize, okay, we want to look at this center. We're looking at the radius here. The radius here is two, and this distance are both r. So we solve for r, and then it's from there. It's not difficult. In my opinion, this is this could be arguably the hardest problem on the test. Maybe second hardest after number twenty-five. I would say. So I hope you enjoyed this video.